<clears throat> the Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theatre Incorporated, presents For Bonnie Annie Larry, starring Donald Crisp, Beverly Tyler, Sarah Allgood, with Dan O'Herlihy, and Sean McClory. Ray Milland is your host. <laughs> More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Most families have a family photo album, a picture record of happy occasions. Yes, I guess we all like to reminisce a little and remember the pleasant get-togethers of family picnics and reunions. It's the thrill of seeing our family knit closely together, of seeing our children growing up with the ideals and heritage that are so much a part of our America. And faith in God is truly a part of that heritage. That's why we say, if you haven't started the practice of family prayer in your home, begin tonight, and you'll discover what so many have learned you'll discover that the most peaceful picture for your album of memories is your family united together in family prayer. Ray Milland returns following tonight's family theater story for Bonnie Annie Larry, starring Donald Crisp, Sarah Allgood, and Beverly Tyler, with Dan O'Herlihy and Sean McClory. haunting memories of other years come back to us and live again in song and story. Such is the ballad of Annie Laurie and the gallant romance that inspired it. You sent for me, Mrs. Ramsey? Aye, Sandy. Come here. Sandy, there's something on my mind. And I'm turning to you because no matter what else I may think about you, I give you credit for having principles. I'm glad we've agreed on something, Mrs. Ramsey. Aye, even though you be only a stable boy. Ah, tis a fine, honourable profession I'll have, you know. Oh, tis that, Sandy, tis that. Out with it, Mrs. Ramsey. What are you up to now? Well, the truth of it is, I'm worried sick about Miss Annie. Something's come over her. The way she's taken to daydreaming and brooding. Ah, oh, no doubt she's pondering like every lass or wedding bells and getting married. No, no, Sandy, she's not. And that's the pinch of the matter. I'm suspecting she's not going to take to Laird Ferguson. That's a bold thought to be thinking, Mrs. Ramsey. Ah, it is, Sandy, it is, I grant you. And we'll put his lordship in a dither. Twill indeed, if there's truth in it, after him picking Laird Ferguson for her. You know, I wouldn't be presuming if her mother were alive. But now, I look upon it as my solemn duty to take a hand. In all the years that I've served as housekeeper at Max Welton, there's one thing I've ne'er, ne'er shirked, and that... That thing is my duty. Did you speak to his lordship? Good grief, no, lad. I don't want to get the man all riled up till I've got something sure to go on. And how, pray, are you going about that? You're, you're going about it for me, Sandy. Uh, uh, me? Aye. You can keep an eye on Miss Annie when she sets out for a stroll in the glen today. I suspect she's holding secret meetings, Sandy. You mean I'm to spy on the lass? Oh, you needn't put it so raw, Sandy. Mm, I've no taste for spying, Mrs. Ramsey. It is against my scruples. But, Sandy, it's our duty to safeguard Miss Annie. And his lordship... But how will... about her cousin Jenny? Can you not put the task upon her? Sure, they're thick as glue, the two of them. Now, listen, Sandy. If you thought our Miss Annie was headed for some unknowable grief, you'd raise your little finger to help her, wouldn't you? But, Mrs. Ramsey... Aye, of course you would. You can say you're doing it under protest, Sandy. That will ease the matter for you. Under protest, Sandy. Annie, Annie, thank heaven I caught you in time. Take off that cloak. You're not going out to the glen today. What are you talking about, Jeannie? Did the gilly come back with news that the water started? No, but it's as bad as that for you, Annie. You're being spied upon. 
I just overheard Ramsay give orders to Sandy to spy on you. And if he sees you with Lord Douglas, he'll report it to Ramsay, and Ramsay will report it to your father, and, well, you can picture to yourself the consequences. Now, what right have they to discuss They what... think it for your welfare after your father's proposing to Lord Ferguson in your name. But I've not chosen Lord Ferguson. With the way your father does things, you'll have little chance of choice. Jeannie, I promised William I'd meet him today. If I don't come, he'll think, well... He'll think I've stopped loving you. Oh, I wish to heaven you'd never met this Lord Douglas. Jeannie! I mean it. You were reasonably content to marry whomever your father chose, up to a few months ago. I, But I didn't know then what love means. And of course you're sure you do now. Well, I wouldn't think of opposing my father if I didn't. Oh, it's that ballad Lord Douglas wrote for you that's turned your head. Jeannie, do you think if I appealed to Lord Ferguson, I mean told him exactly what happened that he'd release me from my father's promise to marry him? And supposing he did? There'd be no sense to that. You know your father would never let you marry a Douglas. Well, there's more sense to my falling in love with a Douglas than a, a, a century-old clannish feud that father insists on continuing. Well, that's a pretty sentiment, but it's Jeannie, not... I've got an idea. What? You go in my stead. Oh? Explain to William the predicament I'm in. Oh, you'll do this for me, won't you, Jeannie? Yes, yes but... I'll get back oh. again, Lord Lord. Oh. Lord Ferguson, back from the hunt. Hurry, Jeannie. But where will I meet him? Uh, by the split rock at the foot of the glen. Aye. Tell him I'll try to steal away later aye, if aye, I can. Honey! Honey! Where are you? I'm coming, Father. Sit so down, Ferguson. We'll have word soon enough to get excited if the gilly comes back with the news of war. I fear it will be a bad report that he'll bring, Lord Lowry. I feel inside of me that Britain has already made her declaration of war. Well, then they must have gone over the head of Gladstone. What's one man's persuasion in a crisis like this? It would be a terrible blow now. Of all time for you to leave Scotland. With a marriage arrangement and everything. I see you brought the ale yourself, Annie. You see, she's a good girl, Ferguson. That reminds me. Don't we have some plans to discuss? Annie, Ferguson is speaking to you. Oh, oh, I beg your pardon, Lord Ferguson. Uh, my mind was drifting with those sunset clouds. And for that, I don't blame you, Annie. It is a beautiful sight from this window. Ah, uh, Ferguson, but there's always remained one blight upon the horizon. The castle of Douglas there in the distance. That sight has always been a sore affliction to me. Oh, come now, sir. That's carrying your clannish hatred too far to, to vent your spleen upon a noble piece of architecture. Someday, Father, you're going to have to forget those hatreds and try... Uh, you'll ne'er see that day, Annie. I was born with that hatred in my blood. It's as much a part of me as me eyes and me limbs. Read the bloody archives of our clan history. And you'll know why there can never be any redress between the Lurries and the Douglases. Well, at least they have the prudence to stay within their bounds. You'll grant them that. Eh? They've learned from bitter experience what awaits them if they ever venture across the waters of that lock. Oh, don't bother me now. Haven't I told... A lady, you say? Who? Lady Jane Scott. Lady Jane? You're surprised, sir. She asked me not to tell you who it was, but I, I well, thought... It must be 20 years, Ramsay. It's all of that since she's been here, sir. Well, tell her I'll be down in a minute. Aye, sir. And Ramsay? Yes, sir? Go tell Annie that we have a visitor. I will, sir. Well, now, if she hasn't been here for 20 years, she couldn't have turned up at a better time. Maybe a woman like Jane in the house is what Annie needs most right now. Jane. Jane, well, I, I can't believe it. Look at... Have I changed so, Robert? Well, no, Jane, it's not that, but I think you're more beautiful than ever. <laughs> After 20 years. Oh, that's sinful flattery. Come here and sit you down. Now, tell me, what brings you to Max Welton? Well, it is a neighbourly call, you might say, Robert. I'm a guest at Gordon Castle across the loch. Uh, well, just talk about yourself, Jane. Well, there, there's not much to tell, Robert. Since Arthur's death, I've, I've been travelling about from place to place. Mm, and we're nothing much to think about or to do. Well, of late, I've turned again to my music. And I've, I've done a few original compositions. You have? Uh, well, we'll have right. to hear them. 
My daughter Annie has a great gift for music. And a reputation for beauty. I've heard about her in the Southland. Proud and beautiful, like a true Heelander, they say. Uh, she has the pride of the clan of the Lurries, and... Here she is now. Annie, my dear. My old friend, Lady Jane Scott. Tis a pleasure, Lady Jane. Ah, oh, Robert. She's charming, charming. You must be very proud of her indeed. Uh, uh, pardon me, your lordship. It's the mercer. She's, she's... Quiet, man. This isn't a stable you're bursting into. But you told me to tell you when the colt was coming. Oh, I'll be off with you now. I... You'll excuse me, Lady Jane. Annie, it's my prize mare. Mm. I'll be back in just a minute or so. Come sit here beside me, Annie. Has your father near spoken to you about me? No, Lady Jane. He's not much given to expressing his sentiments. Well, once, a long time ago, when I was about your age, Annie, we were sweethearts. <laughs> Maybe that's why Father has never spoken about you. Well, we might have been married, too, had not my father, Lord rest his soul, bent me to his will. But that's a story that should be forgotten, no? It's not a new story for me, Lady Jane. Oh? I, I thought you said your father had near spoken of me. It's my own story you've told me. Your story, too? I. Oh, my child. Tell me, what is it? You can confide in me. It's Lord Ferguson. My father entered into marriage arrangements with him. Oh, and you don't love him? No, Lady Jane. If ever a girl was crossed, it is I. What is it, Annie? If it's someone else, your father could be talked to. Maybe it's not as bad as It you couldn't think. be worse with the gulf of hatred between his clan and ours. Y you mean he's a Douglas? I. Oh, Annie, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. You love this Douglas very much. That I do. And he? Maybe this will tell you his feelings, Lady Jane. It's something I have always with me. A ballad he wrote. It's the thought of how things stand between us. And no matter what happens, this is something no one will ever be able to destroy. A ballad to my Annie Laurie. Mark Swelton's braes are bonny, where early falls the dew. And t'was there that Annie Laurie gied me her promise true. Beautiful. Gied me her promise true, that ne'er forgot will be. And for bonny Annie Lowry, I'd lay me doon and dee. You know, as I read this, Annie, the softest melody keeps floating through my mind. A melody with, with all the feelings that I too once knew so well. Annie, someday I must put this ballad to music. It's a song I'll be able to sing only with a broken heart, Lady Jane. Annie, dear. <laughs> I'm afraid I cannot help you. It's beyond me to settle a feud that has lasted a century between two clans. But even if I cannot help you, Annie, at least I can give music to these words of your love story. Where have you been? I thought you'd never return. So many things have been happening. Quick, tell me about William. Annie, Annie, what shall we do? He, he, he's here. Here? I, I tried to tell him, to, to keep him from coming, but he just... William! Where is he, Annie? Where's your father? William, are you out of your senses? Where is he, Annie? No, William, no. You can't see. I got to see him, come what may. I can't go on like this. It's driving me out of my mind. I, I'm going to reason with him, man to man. But, William, you're a Douglas. If he ever sees you in this house, please go before... No, I'll not go, Annie. Not till I've seen him. Annie is right, Lord Douglas. This rashness will ruin everything. You don't know, William, the blindness of his hate. He'd stop at nothing. Oh, don't fear, lass, don't fear. We'll not come to blows. And sooner or later, I'll have to see him. William, please listen to me. Today there came to Maxwell and a friend of my father's, Lady Scott. I know father respects her greatly... If I can get her to speak to him in our behalf, there's a hope she may win him over. So be patient. I know that's the best way. The only way. Honey, is that you in the study? Oh, heaven help us, it's my father. 
Ah, uh, here you are, Annie. Les. I've been looking at this young man. Who is he? What is he doing here? Lord Lowry, my name is William Douglas, and I've come here to speak... Douglas! A Douglas here at McWelton. So you make light of our warnings, do you? So you've come here in open defiance. Father, it is the man I love. Annie! I've come here to appeal to you, Lord Lowry, if you'll listen to me. Just a word... There is only one word that can pass between us, and that word is hate. Hate! Your hate is not my hate, Lord Lowry. It belongs not to me nor to Annie. It is the sin of our fathers and our forefathers, and I want no share of it. You'll find naught else here at Mexwelton, sir. Except a broadsword, but like every Douglas, you'd be too much of a coward to face a sword. William, please, it's useless. Quiet, Annie, quiet. This is something your father and I must have between us. Every man has only one life Your Lordship, to... your Lordship, your Ramsay, Lordship. Ramsay, how many times do I have to tell you your not Your Lordship, to... the gilly has just come with the news. It is war, your Lordship. Britain has declared war upon Russia. War? Yes, and the war office has issued a call throughout the country for volunteers. Volunteers, do you say? Do you hear that, Douglas? Volunteers. So you have only one life, huh? Well, here's your chance to lay it down for the Queen. And it would be a fitting end. A better end than any Douglas deserves. For mind you, you'll never marry Annie Lurie. Never. <laughs> Forward the light brigade, was there a man dismayed? No, no, the soldier knew someone had blundered. Theirs not to reason why, theirs but to do and die. Into the valley of death rode the 600. Good for you, Annie, to get out again into the hills. You've been eating your heart out in useless thoughts. But if his body had only been recovered, Lady Jane, so that I might visit his grave, whisper a prayer, plant upon it a wee sprig of heather. The lad is gone, Annie, and all your tears can't bring him back. But you're young, lass. Think of the bright days that are ahead. Lady Jane, it's so easy to say words like that, but so hard to believe them. Annie... Little by little, the pang of remembrance will lessen, and in its place comes a dim, sweet memory. I know. You've waited long enough, child. Heed your father's advice. Yield to his wishes, Annie, and marry Lord Ferguson. That's something I'll never do, Lady Jane. Well, now, Ferguson, I've done all that I could. So now it's your affair. Nay, nay. Why, man, you go through the clash and the din of battle, and now you're fearful to speak your heart to a maid. But, sir, it, it's the respect I have for Annie. I'd ne'er force myself upon her. Lord Ferguson, do you imply that I'm forcing her upon you? You opened these formalities with me. Aye, but th th that was before You I... gave your word. It's not binding under these circumstances, Lord Lowry. There's no good for us to argue in this matter. I shall be back in six months or so, and maybe then we'll be... Goodbye, sir. And if you never come back, it will be much too soon. Ah, oh, come now, Annie, lass. Is there nothing I can do for you to break this spell you've thrown around the house? Why, it's like we were all dead. You know, no good can come of it, lass. I'm all right, sir. Ah, uh, honey, would you do something for your father if he asked you? You know, I've gone against you only once. Eh, uh, well then, here it is. I'll ask the lads and lasses from the countryside around and we'll have here a, a party and a dance. It'll cheer the house and I think that's what you need. I'll do it if you ask. Good. <laughs> <laughs> 
Good. Then I'll see Ramsay and I'll... But, Father... Yes? Would you do something for me if I asked you? Well, there's nothing I wouldn't do for you if you ask me now. Nothing? Come, what is it? Would you make peace with the Douglases? Ah, no, lass, you've touched a very tender spot there. There's nothing to be gained by that. Oh, but there is for me. There's the memory of one I love. Will you ask the Douglases to the party? Well, no, lass, you'll have to give me time. You see, I'll... Then would you let me ask them? Well, I'll, I'll think about it, Annie. I'll think about it. Lady Jane, you've come back, and in all this storm. I, I, I had to come. Oh, it is a great joy to see you again. Annie, I've heard the rumour about you. About me? I, I thought you'd want me to help you. I don't understand. Help me T to get to William. <sighs> Please don't tease me, Lady Jane. It's a memory too sacred. But it's true. I heard in the Southland that he's still living under another name. I thought he might even have come to you secretly. Why do you torment me with word like that? Surely if he were alive, I'd be the first to know of it. I've dreamed of him. I've prayed too, but I know it's only a dream. I I'm sorry, child, that, that I came to speak to you of this. You see, when I heard the rumour, I thought I understood everything. Why you rejected Lord Ferguson. I thought that William was secretly in hiding, waiting until after Lord Lowry passed away. Now you see what busy tongues can do. Aye, busy tongues have broken many hearts. Well, I, I shall spike some of the evil tongues that have started this rumour. But I had another reason for coming. I wrote the music to your ballad. But now oh, I Oh, let it. me see it, please. Well, shall I sing it for you? Would you? Max Welton's praise are bonny Where early falls the dew and twas there that Annie Laurie Gied me her promise true Gied me... Stop it! Father! Lord Laurie, what's happened to you? Do I have to go mad? Coming into my own house to hear that? But, Father, this is the ballad William wrote for me. Lady Jane put it to music. Do you not think I understand, then? But you said you'd be reconciled with the Douglases. Yeah, I did that. Before I knew that they'd tricked me. And that you had tricked me. I heard it today. He is alive and back at the castle. <gasps> now you needn't put up a front for me. He's been living for some time within a day's journey and under a false name. I know what your plan was. And I suppose you, Lady Jane, were a party to it. No, but if I had known he was alive, I would have been. Eh. Uh, there isn't a one of you that I can trust. That's not true. Annie knew nothing about this report. And I came only as soon as I heard it. But I didn't expect you'd still be this way. Oh, Robert. It's your hatred of the Douglases that's, that's made you a hard and bitter man. Have you forgotten that, that I once loved you? Yes, even as a... Honey, where are you going? Come back. Don't stop her, Robert. She's doing what I often regretted not having done. Are you gone mad? She'll never cross the lock alone in that storm. Honey, wait for me. Wait for me. Mrs. Ransom, you're, see, uh, you're seeing history being made. Sure, when the last took, her, uh, took him in her arms, that was the first time a light came into his eyes since they had found him like a beggar, wandering on the country roads. And you're going to stand there all day, take the flagons into them, take the flagons in at once. I never thought I'd see the day when a lorry would marry a Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> and now, my friends, I'm going to ask for a song. And I think it's no more than fitting to ask the man who wrote it to sing it for us this day. 
And may I add that Lady Jane here wrote the music. Right? <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Uh, Lord Douglas, you'll sing it for us, I'm sure. Oh, please do, William. Well, I, I didn't think when I wrote it, it'd be remembered this way. It was written just for Annie. And I'd like Annie to sing it now, if she'd please. Oh, well, Annie, it's good. Do it was written for you, Annie. But it's our song, too. Come, lass, sing it for us. <laughs> Wilton Breeze or Bunny, where early falls the dew, and it's there that I. This is Ray Milland again. You know, there's a thrill in old stories and music and romance. It's the comfortable feeling of familiar things, like our favorite chair, a pair of worn-out slippers, or an old friend. It's like the comfortable feeling of the things of home. Yes, home can and should be the happiest place for us, and it's worth every effort on our part to make it so. It's worth the effort of a little thoughtfulness of others, a kind and forgiving word, a little appreciation of what others do, and it's worth the effort of taking a little time out for daily family prayer. Prayer brings the most powerful help in the world, God's help. And every family will find in daily family prayer a new blessing and peace and happiness in their home. A family at prayer is a family at peace, together in lasting bonds of understanding and love. For the family that prays together stays together. Before saying goodnight, I'd like to thank Donald Crisp, Beverly Tyler, Sarah Allgood, Sean McClory, and Dan O'Herlihy for their performances this evening. Our thanks to Wal Spence for writing tonight's play and to Max Stair for his music. This production of Family Theatre Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Colleen Collins, June Foray, and Felix Valley. Next week, our Family Theatre star will be Otto Kruger in Music of a Broken Bell. Your host will be Pedro de Cordoba. This is Ray Milan saying good night and God bless you. This series of the Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at the same time when our Family Theater star will be Otto Kruger. Your host, Pedro de Cordoba. Merrill Ross speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>